Welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen, to another Histories in Miniature video where today I'm going to be talking about the Pickle Halb. So before I begin as to why, I'm just going to introduce very briefly what this is. Designed in roughly 1841-42, uh, inspired from Napoleonic Cassier, Crissier, I really apologise if I can't say that word, uh, helmets, the cavalry, and possibly some Russian style helmets. Uh, Adopted by Prussian, the Prussian War Ministry in 1842, kind of eventually got adopted by all kind of Prussian slash German uh, nations, kind of. Uh, the German unification is very, very complex and will require a video of its own, and I don't want to get too into it now. But basically, you've got to imagine German culture as, or Prussian culture as many different states, small states, joining eventually to one big state. Uh, le le learn about Otto von Bismarck for for that. Otto, oh my good lord, that, that man, that history is incredible. But I'm not here to talk about that, I'm literally just here to talk about the helmet today. Uh, so eventually fully adopted by all Prussian states in 1886. The Franco-Prussian War of 1870-71 really helped cement this bad boy in the hearts and minds of the Prussian slash German People, so brief introduction over uh, a quick conversation as to why this helmet. I might do the history of its design and things in another date, but today's video isn't for that. It's literally looking at my, my cheap replica copy and telling you why I can see the value of this as a helmet. I might talk about the major histories in another video at some point. I think that would actually be quite fun because it's very interesting. Uh, and maybe not everyone all knows quite what it's about, but... For now, just why. So, the first thing I notice when wearing this, uh, it's made of leather and brass as well, and it's it's definitely heavier than the pith helmet from previous video, you may have seen it. Definitely heavier, I can feel it on my head, but it's not overwhelming. Back in the Napoleonic eras, you have the big hats, the big designs, the big let's yeah, make everyone look big and tall and imposing. Yeah. This isn't that, but can you imagine those big helmets, those big hats on parades and in battle and in rain and in snow? They're going to get pretty bloody heavy. They're going to get pretty bloody exhausting. This was designed to be lightweight. It was designed to be versatile. It was designed to break away from all that from the past and really give your men, give your army that little bit more versatility, breathing room, space. Like, it just makes a soldier's job easier. You do kind of see uh, a general stretch in militaries, a general kind of movement in militaries away from very formal but also very restrictive clothing and things in the, the 1700s. Um, you, men would wear like stocks, like very tight things around their necks and their hair would have to be a certain way and powdered and wigs and gaiters for the legs, you know. Big, you saw a moving away of those fashion trends, which looked very smart but were also very impractical, slowly as the decades moved on, to more practical clothing. And this, this is, a, this is a, a culmination of that. It is a much more practical type of helmet. The second thing I notice about the, the helmet is there's a, there's a kind of a little bit of a visor here, which will again help with some debris and anything that would fall. Nothing major. I don't think it would stop a great deal. I definitely, if a half a building or half a clod of earth is falling on my head. This isn't going to do a great deal. No neck protection whatsoever either. You've got, you've got this. So maybe back of the head protection, but nothing here. Nothing here at all. So I wouldn't do a great deal with a great deal of debris, but it would definitely have a reasonable amount of protection. Moderate. Let's say, let's say, uh, you know, if we were D&Ding &Ding it, it'd be like a leather cap. Like a moderate, not a steel helmet. Uh, and that's another thing, actually, before I get too far into anything else. Helmets of this era were designed for, rel like, this sort of thing, rel moderate, mo very moderate. Like, concussion protection, I can see a sword blow maybe getting deflected, although it's still going to do my neck a damn sight bit of injury when I'm getting smacked around the side of the head. I can see that. But they're not really designed for defence, they're not really designed for protection. It really took, halfway through World War I, with thousands dying, like, daily, before armies and nations really realised how important it was to protect the head. This has an element of that, and other helmets had an element of that throughout, but it was not its, its primary purpose. As, 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 as strange as that seems, it really wasn't. 
Uh, I, another thing I've noticed again is uh, this is not a German gun, by the way. It's a BB gun. It's a terrible, terrible toy. But uh, again, I can look down it very. I can turn my head very quickly. None of the weight is pulling anywhere on my head. You can feel the spike on top, but it's not throwing me around none at all. So it feels quite practical. It feels quite nice. It feels. It feels usable, it feels workable, it feels workmanlike. So that really is why the pickle help. Why the spike on the top? It looks kind of cool. And to be honest with you, that's part of the only reason why. It serves no practical purpose at all. It was changed to a ball for cannons, um, for artillery, sorry, artillery. They had a little ball helmet instead of a spike on the top. Equally, uh, cavalry designs of this might have been all metal instead of leather and brass, so there's more protection there. So the things that had, there was lots of variation. The World War One ones, for example, eventually they, they they ran out of things like leather and you know brass and that, so they were making them with cardboard and sheet metal. And it really is one of the first kind of rationing situations, which is why they moved away from the pickle habit. It was too damn complicated to produce on a mass scale when it came to World War One. So I'm, I'm very much rambling here, but there's lots of reasons why, there's lots of things to say about this helmet. It also has straps, I have straps here, and they're quite clever little things because they just hook. And I do, I do really like the fact that they just hook, but I, I don't think I look good in the straps, so I don't naturally wear that. But it is, it's a very practical, very nice helmet to wear, and it's very distinct. And that's actually the kind of second element of this. The practicality is huge. The moderate defense is, is valuable. The look is very, very impressive. But what's really there is it's the distinctive nature of the helmet. Because, again, as I very briefly touched on at the start of the video, 1840s, 1880s, that kind of period of time, German unification, Prussian unification, this is something that got adopted by many different states it eventually became Germany. It helped share that cultural heritage, that 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 same they were they were linked, they were interlinked as a as a peoples. This kind of helped with that. This sort of it, it was something clearly seen by many nations or many small states that helped them see themselves as each other, helped them see the person next door as also part of them. So again, please look into Otto von Bismarck. Otto von Bismarck, I hope I'm saying that right. I think I am. Otto Bismarck doesn't sound right. Please look into him. Uh, Bismarck, it's in, he's incredible. German unification is uh, it's, it's a history into itself. So the pickle hell, why? Bloody practical compared to what came before. Not as practical as what came afterwards. Moderately defensive, especially compared to what came before. Less defensive than what came afterwards. Bloody distinct. Bloody distinct. Uh, and that helped unify a nation to a point. Things like statesmen and intelligent people and, you know, the Franco-Prussian War helped as well, probably more so. But this played an element, so yeah, the Pickle Helm, my second favourite helmet. Thank you very much for watching. Bye! <laughs>